really before I forget to do that and uh, welcome you all to uh, the March edition of our Adventure to ASU user group. Uh, sorry that we have not had a user group in a couple of months. Uh, just things haven't worked out for us on this end. But now, as a result, we have a lot to share with you today, right? I have a lot to share with you uh, today. So again, welcome uh, to, the, I guess, the Shamrock edition of the user group. Uh, I'm Steve McGillivray, your host today, uh, program coordinator here in the Office of University Events and Protocol. I am one of two of entry account admins here at ASU. Uh, the other is Laura Rutherford, uh, who will uh, is not uh, joining us today. She is actually working Founders Day event uh, with the Alumni Association. So I am flying solo, guys. So uh, hold on to your hats and we'll see how this goes. So we have a lot to talk about. First, we're gonna just chat about uh, updates on the webinars that we have available for you guys if you want additional training. We will touch again on the ever popular DMARC or email security uh, features we have in the Ventry that have been popping up from time to time still in our support queues. So we'll remind you about that. Then we'll be, move on to uh, new items. And one of the new items are changes coming uh, in, a, in our registrations with the theme editor and the look and feel. Uh, of our registrations, and I will share with you what I know about the meeting, play, and eventry merger, uh, which was announced at the beginning of the year, and we really haven't talked anything about that, but we'll give you a little inside look today. And then the really the, the big item today, which is going to take up most of our time, I believe, is the first series of how-tos with a theme of review and approve. We're going to show you some ways in the registration site that you can uh, basically review registrations or registration process and have them approved by a number of different means. So we're looking at the approval feature in registration, the external review feature, and we take a peek at the abstracts module if there is time, because I do, it's a, it's a big module to look at, but I do wanna tell you what it can do. But I, as always, we wanna leave time for your questions about anything to do with the Ventry. Because there's a lot to talk about here today, I'm gonna to have a few slides up just to pause for extra questions about that particular topic. But then we will, act, as always, end the session with an open forum for questions and answers, okay? So moving into old business. Again, we do have two more Ventry Essential webinars or eventual Ventry Essential Plus webinars coming up. One is April 5th and, and then it's April 3rd and then we are done for spring term. Now the Eventry Essentials Plus is an hour long Eventry Essentials class where we answer all the basic questions of Eventry and then an extra half hour at the end where it's just again an open question forum. We're happy to answer questions about what we've just gone over in the training or whatever you wanna talk about. Um, in a venture in general. To sign up, you can go to that URL uh, on the screen, which I am going to paste now into the chat. If you have already registered for one of our uh, webinars, either in fall term or spring term, and you'd like to come to this one, uh, you can, you would just not register as a new registration, you would modify an old registration, go to that link, there's a link on that landing page that will take you to the site where you can enter your old registration and add new, okay? So, uh, next up, I wanted to remind you that Eventry also offers its own series of on-demand video trainings called Aventrain. Okay, anything we're going to talk about today, there are trainings for that as well. You can sign up for this. Basically, you go to a page to sign up. They will send you an email when you're registered, and that will give you the link to the login page, and then you can have at this knowledge center. It has videos. It has documentation. It's a really nice site, and uh, I've looked at quite a few of their videos. Very handy. And again, the link to that is in the chat. Next, DMARC. 
So again, we still get these questions on why am I getting this error about domain issue with my emails? DMARC is a email security feature that UTO has been implementing, well, gosh, since 2019 across the ASU enterprise. Any system that's deemed to be a, a third party mail system has been asked to use this and Aventry is one of those systems. So all you have to do is in any from or sender email field, add a DMARC compliant domain to that field. Now, if you're using just an asu.edu email address, all you have to do is add the A period before the asu.edu. That's all you have to do. There's no special request you have to put in. There's nothing else you, you really need to do. Just add that A dot before the asu.edu. And then you can save that email. And I think we hit this from time to time because people clone old events. And when they start to edit the old emails, they haven't been made DMARC compliant yet. So that's what they keep seeing it and they forget. Okay, that's, that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Now there are other uh, domains as well that you can use. If you are with Thunderbird, you have your own domain and ASU 365 has their own domain, but it has to be one of these are DMARC compliant. And if you would like more information about DMARC or these alternate, alternative domains, you can check again our Aventry support site. These short links go to our Aventry support site where you can get more information. Okay. So again, pause here. Any questions about that? Any questions about the webinars? Any questions about uh, DMARC? You can put in the chat or you can just Unmute your microphone. I'm not sure I understand. Yes, not you, Siri. She listens all the time. Okay, hearing none, we will carry on. News and updates. Okay, so you have probably seen a message pop up when you uh, log into your Venture account that something is going on with registration theme editor. What is going on? Well, what's going on? is the legacy look and feel we've been using for the last five years is going away and will no longer be supported. And Aventry is, well, they were encouraging you, then they were strongly encouraging you. And now they've got their finger tapping their watch and looking at us saying, okay, now this is serious. We are going to uh, turn off the old look and feel and everyone should transition to the new theme editor. Support for the old look and feel is going to end at the, what they say is the end of Q2, which means to us, June of this year, okay? So it's time to transition those events. How can you tell if you have, uh, looking at an event that has legacy look and feel? Well, if under registration, under look and feel, you've got these four menu items you are looking the legacy event. If you look at the event itself in preview event or in the registration site, if it looks like this with this very whitish template and the uh, web spark looking ish uh, footer, this is the legacy template. So you're going to want to transition this to theme editor. Once you make the transition, you would only see two sub menus under look and feel. Headers and footers are the same as it was in the old system, but now instead of templates, event logo and colors and fonts, now it's all rolled into theme editor and your site will look like this, this box with a background of your choice. A plus in the registration side, you have this is truly the theme editor editing window inside your registration site, okay? So now you can, if you put a lot of work into old events and you still want to keep the emails you've created, the, uh, uh, the questions you've created, you still can do that. You can transition your event to the new look and feel, to the new theme editor. And you can do that under advanced settings, general settings, where you can click and enable the use event theme editor feature, save and stay and then you will be using theme editor from here on. Now there are a few other adjustments that you should make. And we have a how-to article on all the things to be aware of, again, on our Aventry support site, 
just go there, go under the how to tab and look for the how to convert existing registration to theme editor. I will once again, plop that link into the chat for y'all. Uh, another alternative is just to use our ASU templates. Version three was the uh, new version where we actually switched over to theme editor. Version four is the most recent version, again, with theme editor. So you could always start over, fresh start, with all the latest and greatest features we've enabled for you on our templates. Okay. So we talked a bit about theme editor and how to edit with theme editor under the registrations part two webinar. If you were uh, attended one of those, you can still go back and watch that video. Uh, again, we have how to switch over to theme editor and the event support site also has information on theme editor. So is this a time for a question? Yes, it is. Any questions about theme editor? Give me a second to find the mics. Hearing no objections, we'll move on to the meeting play of entry merger. This is truly a merger between two companies. Uh, and I don't know if you are familiar with meeting play. I was not before this merger, but I'm becoming more acquainted with it. The way the merger is affecting the whole, both teams in this merger is a venture considers itself primarily for tier two and tier three, small and medium sized events. So adding meeting play actually allows them to target the tier one large events. Now, what are these tiers? Well, from what little I've been able to glean, it's a combination of, in general terms, the size of your audience and the size of your budget, really. Uh, if you're under a thousand attendees, you're probably a tier three. If you're between two to or one to two thousand or more, you're in tier three, and above that's tier one. But those are general terms. If uh, you have a smaller audience below a thousand people, but you ha want to have, you really want that higher end looking event, virtual event you can certainly contract with meeting play of entry. We have to call them both now to get that service. So what does that look like? So uh, I have been poking around the meeting play site and I've actually uh, attended some meeting play uh, virtual events. And this is what they're offering, really high end stuff. If you want the kind of lobby where you've got uh, these hot spots, it actually looks like you're walking into a lobby where you have an exhibitor's booth and a virtual expo, help desk and all that kind of thing. These are all hotspots you click in to enter. This is the kind of thing meeting play is going to offer those who are interested. Now this of course, they, and very customizable, really this is the um, virtual lobby. What we've talked about for on the adventure side, this is what the meeting play virtual lobbies look like. Very customizable, very brandable with lots of features and bells and whistles to offer you if you're interested. Also, and if you're interested right now, you can experience this yourself by signing up for the Meeting Play Ultimate Hybrid Master classes. These are a series of classes once a week, every Thursday, uh, since March or since February 24th, they've been offering these uh, virtual sessions. These are great to go into to see not only how the system works, but also to get the information they provide. This is my screenshots of what I was experiencing while I was in there, uh, similar to what I've experienced in the Eventry built-in platform. Uh, you know, I think as you visit some of these sites or these different companies, they all kind of look a little similar, but then you see what differences are. Lots of bells and whistles they can offer you. Uh, this is sort of their webinar version here, and you can adjust the view uh, to uh, make chats and polls more prominent. This is called the engagement view. This is called their theater view. And then down here is more of their interactive chat features. The way they're running these webinars is they have like an expo booth feature open a half hour before the scheduled webinar. So you can just come in and chat with uh, experts from Meeting Play. Uh, 
Then you can go into the webinar. It lasts 45 minutes to an hour. And after the webinar, you can enter this hybrid community chat feature to talk more about what you just, what you just experienced. As I said, lots of, and all these features are active. Kind of cool to get in there early and poke around and uh, see what this platform is like. These, this is the schedule of the uh, webinars. And if you sign up, you can still see anything that's already happened. I had one this earlier today. Be aware these times are in Eastern Standard Time. Uh, oh, I don't know what daylight savings time has affected them, but I figured the add the calendar will figure that out. You can still see these as on-demand videos, even if you have signed up this late. You can see the next two live and in person, but you can still roll back and some good topics have been covered here. I've made it easy for you by providing a quick link to those classes. Uh, sign up and they will send you uh, information and, and you can see the um, day ahead of time they send you an email in the morning of they send you an email so you link in really good information. So if you are interested in meeting play, it's another contracted service like the eventry built in services. If you're interested, contact me. I will put you in touch with our eventry account manager and they can create a quote for you on how much uh, this service costs for you. But so I would consider this is full service. This is the highest level of service a venture meeting play is going to offer. Okay, so that's how it affects us right now. Is some of this going to trickle down into uh, tier two and tier three? I don't know. That's still to be determined. And when I learn, I will let you know. Okay, so uh, any questions on that? Okay, hearing none. Moving on to our main feature. Again, the review and approval features uh, inside of Ventry. And I have to say, I, I, have not, I have not had cause to use these for any events I have done. Uh, we saw some support tickets go through with users asking questions about events they were hosting using these features. And the support questions and answers intrigued uh, Laura and I. So we decided to explore these ourselves. And I have to say, I found them really neat that we have these features available to us, already existing features inside event registration. Uh, so I'm definitely putting these uh, features in my back pocket for you know, solving any of my issues. Now, a word of what's gonna happen right now. So I'm gonna give you a tour of these features. This is in no way a full tutorial on how to set up and use these. I'm just gonna give you the highlights. And uh, if you're interested, you can contact us for more information or you can uh, get training on these in the Aventrain on-demand video series. So when we were looking at, well, really it was one thing going through our support document, we looked at it, we said, you know, we really have a couple of different ways for us to be able to put a pause on the registration process so that someone can review a registration slash application and move it to even an approved state or just put it on hold to be reviewed. And that includes called the approval feature, in which you have two different types of approval, what's called standard approval and one called management approval. There is also a feature called external review where you can have people outside of your unit, outside of ASU, outside of Aventry, review applications and give you information on their, their feedback on that registration application. And then finally, the abstracts module, we threw it in here because it is another way of reviewing things. It's very specialized for collecting abstracts, right? Presentations for an academic conference. So how do they compare? Well, the approval feature and the external review feature are both currently in the registration site, right? You can use those now. Under standard approval, you're programming a process where people can be automatically 
set into either an approved status, a pending approval status, or a declined status. And those statuses are, can be based on categories, on answers to attendee info questions you've programmed, or both. Another feature of approval is what's called management approval, where the attendee needs someone else, usually an approving supervisor, we call them in the system, who signs off or agrees that they should be admitted to that session. So it's more of an internal process. The approval feature is more of an internal process versus external review where you're giving a series of reviewers who you program. Again, these people don't have to have entry accounts. They just need to have an email address. You're giving these reviewers a chance to review information from the attendee info questions submitted and giving them a rating, if that's what you want to program, they can leave comments and you can get reports from all those reviewers. Okay. So I've kind of separated those again because they're in registration. Abstracts module is an add-on module to the registration system. It's a self-contained module where it creates its own site for accepting submissions reviewing those submissions and selecting those submissions, okay? It has its own built-in email system for confirming the submissions have been received. If you wanna let people know they've been accepted, that's also an email, et cetera. And the reason it's an add-on to registrations is you can convert those submissions into sessions under the agenda sessions module in registrations. Okay, so that's the idea. Those submissions, those abstract submissions are going to be a session during your event. Now there is a fee to use the abstracts module. It's a per submission fee. I don't think it's, I forget, I'm not even gonna say a number. because <laughs> I say something's too high, it's gonna freak people off. I say it's too low, people are gonna go, ah, let's do it. And then I have to give them bad news. So I know this, um, we have the number on our entry support site. So just be aware if there's a fee to use it, okay? So let's look a little deeper into this. So the approval feature. And so no, as you know, normally anyone who registers for your event is automatically confirmed as a registrant for that event. So if you wanna regulate uh, who is a confirmed registrant and who is not, this feature may be for you. Again, you can find it under advanced settings and you'll see the approval tab right there. And you choose on that page, uh, whether you want standard approval or management approval. Okay. If you uh, turn on standard approval, you have three choices. Do you want to approve based on a category? So somebody comes in, they choose a category. That is what determines which status they are, approved, pending, or decline, okay. or you can base it on attendee info questions that you have programmed on the attendee info page, right? And you determine not only the question, but the answers that result in an approval, a pending or a decline. Or again, you can use both, right? A question based on a category. This is what it looks like when we'll get inside here in a minute. Like I said, I'm gonna do a tour, give you a preview. So under approval by category, it's this simple, right? You have created categories for your event registration and now you decide uh, which go where. So in this example, current members can come in pre-approved just by submitting under that category, but new members, they're gonna get a pending approval. Okay, they're gonna be held as pending. Uh, based on attendee info questions, first off, you decide what questions on attendee info you're going to base the status on. And then you can also determine which answers. So for example, and I can use the same question in multiple sections. So here, approval question one 
answers A and B will get you approved, but answer C means you're gonna be pending approval. And I can put multiple questions in these, multiple answers, and I can decide how I'm matching. So if all of these are true, you'll be approved. I can change this to any as well. Okay. Finally, oh, and I wanna make this note, this will add this pop up for me. Be aware when you're using these attendee info questions that you are limited to the question types that have pre-selected options, options that you have programmed, right? Drop down box, radio buttons, multiple check boxes, single check boxes, those are all acceptable. So you can't use single line of text or multi line of text, open-ended questions. It has to be questions where you program the options. And as you can see for multiple check boxes, because remember multiple check boxes allow people to pick more than one option. You can decide if it's all selected answers, or if I remember, if you select any, you can choose which. Okay. And then the, the combination of both, the combination of what category answering questions, which way will provide a status of approved and pending. One other thing I'll have a note here, and this may be confusing you, but you can decide how the system reviews these questions to uh, provide a status. What do I mean by that? Well, over in the left column, both for attending info questions and this one, right now it's going to look at the application or this registration for the parameters I've said here. And if it finds them, it's gonna say approved. If I prefer to have the system look at these conditions first, I can move this status to a higher level and that will trigger the answer being pending approval rather than approved. So you can get pretty complicated here if you want to, as far as programming your approval statuses. All right, let's take a look. Didn't realize I was out that long. Okay, so here we are in my demo for standard approval. As I said, uh, this is under approval under advanced settings. Okay, I have already preset this for uh, approval based on category. If I want to change the category, I can. I can simply go into update. I can uh, adjust, add. And you'll notice it's a pretty smart system. I can't add categories that have been selected somewhere else. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, so if a member or a registrant comes in as a current member on the, um, let's take a look at it. So here I've allowed all of my categories to be visible. Once they select one of these categories, they're automatically going to be chosen to be approved, declined, or pending as I've got it programmed here. Okay. Let's look at another. So here are my here are my questions. So as I was saying earlier, if I can, if I wanted to, I could change order. I could make pending approval be reviewed before approval. Lovely. That a question, all I have to do is hit add or update, and I'm given all the questions that I can use here in this feature. I do have one mark in the multiple checkbox. If I click any, okay, any answer to the multiple checkbox will allow them to get in. Oh, and down here are the multiple answers. So if I just hit all, okay, so it's gonna give me great. Let me change this up. Okay, so that's based on attendee info questions. And the final one is both. First, we add the category. Then we add the questions.
my question for is a simple single checkbox. I was just testing all the different types here I have available. Okay. And yes, I can still put multiple categories in different places because they could be answering the questions differently. Okay. Nice. Now you also have some uh, other options here. Uh, you could decide if you want the approval status to change when a registration is modified. Uh, if you are taking payments with your with your registration, some things to be aware of. Um, anyway, so that is a quick tour of the approval standard approval process. You have some reporting built in for that feature. Under the summary report, you have an approval status already built in where you can get the number of approved declines and pendings. Uh, you also have some extra fields available in the registrant list for these simple approval fields. And some things to keep in mind. Do you need to create a custom message on the registration page? Uh, either as a, I didn't show it to you, but back here. So on the custom message, so when someone is approved, they're gonna automatically get an email if you have programmed one for those different statuses. And here is where you can program the message to go for any of those statuses, approved, declined, pending, okay? Back here. Uh, you can also create some custom headers on the look and feel headers and footers tab based on approval status, okay? Uh, but to change the attendees approval status especially for you know, looking at those people who are pending approval when you're ready to accept those people or decline them. That is something you would do manually, typically through the registrant list. So you can locate them in the registrant list, click on their conferee number and, and under personal information, you can edit their approval status from pending to approved, save and stay. Or if you are changing a lot of people, you can do that in the registrant list by checking the boxes next to the people who you're changing and use the change attendee status. You'll have an option of changing approval status from whatever it currently is, pending approval, to approval, save and stay, okay? Now you'll still have to manually send emails to people you manually change. Uh, you can customize emails a couple different ways. If you are using this system for automatic approval by whatever system you like, categories or questions, you can program, well, you can edit the confirmation email to eliminate or not send to people who are pending approval or declined. Why should they get the confirmation email? And you can also create new triggered emails based on that approval status. So if you want to send either the secondary email or just to the, a special email to the people who are pending approval or who are declined. Okay. A couple other things to be aware of with standard approval is it's only possible to set status on categories, top level categories, not any subcategories. Okay. If you have an email being sent as soon as they've submitted and they're already pre-approved, the initial email will not be recorded in the attendee's email history of their attendee profile, okay? Uh, any modifications made, if you're allowing modifications, will still trigger modification emails. And finally, if any of your attendee info questions have conditional questions added on to them, uh, those are unavailable for approval setup. Okay, you can't choose conditional questions, so basically the second question 
uh, when you're setting up this approval process. Okay. Let's move on to management approval. So this is a system where you want someone else to basically sign off on this attendee coming to your event, okay? Once the attendee has submitted this, I guess we call it a request, an email is automatically sent to the person designated as the approving supervisor to approve or decline the attendee's registration. And you have four different options on how you get the approving supervisor's name and email address. And what's lovely about this is that the approving supervisor does not need to have an inventory account. For them, it's all done over email, okay? So here are your four options of getting that information about the approving supervisor. That's the term we're using. First of all, it's free form filled, sorry, free form text field, one for the name, one for the email address. Okay, you're allowing, uh, let's move on. Two is a preloaded list. You have pre-programmed a list of supervisors that already have an email address as part of the list. And you're asking your attendees to select from the list or you can offer both the free form text field and the preloaded list, okay? You use any of those three options an additional page is added to your registration process called the approval page where they submit that information. And the fourth way is called for selection. This is where you on the back end have already determined who the person is who needs to sign off on approval. The, the um, user won't even see who that is. Break it down one by one. So the free form fields, this is what it looks like. This allows your attendees to enter the name of the email of their supervisor, good for you if you just don't know who the approving supervisor would be for this particular case, okay? Um, email field is email validation. And you have the option of having an explanation text box above again for little velvet glove information to the person submitting what they're supposed to do built into this system. Option two, preloaded list, again, you have program the list of supervisors already and all you're asking the attendee to do is pick one of these names easy for the attendee to use okay but you have to know the attendee's name and email so that you can program it again this also has a text box that you can use as a header to, to tell attendees how to use this field three again is using both so Maybe you have most of the supervisor's um, information that you can pre-programmed, but maybe not everyone's. And so you wanna give people the option, well, that person doesn't recognize the supervisor they're supposed to, <laughs> supposed to use. You can give them the free form option. There's no way to alter the orientation of these. I mean, you can't switch the uh, preload list on top and the free form at the bottom. It's gonna look like this. Okay. Again, the force selection is you, have already programmed on the back end who the approving supervisor is per attendee category. Okay, that person will receive an email when someone registers and the registrant should not see who this person is. There's no extra approval page added to the process. Okay. And the email is gonna be looking like this for all these processes. So it's sent automatically to whoever was entered as the supervisor. Inside the email are these links to whether approve the registration or reject. Once the person, once the supervisor clicks that link, they're taken to a web page that looks like this down the lower left. So, sorry, lower right. My other left. Uh, and it's recorded in inventory as you know, whichever link they they clicked. All happens automatically. No accounts needed for the approving supervisor. Let's see what that looks like. Again, it's an advanced settings under approval. Okay, now you can only choose one or the other of these, either standard approval or management approval. You can't choose both, by the way. And here I've made a very complicated management approval settings based on category. 
and here's where I choose which option I want to use, okay? These are radio buttons, so I can only choose one per category. But as you can see, if I want to, I can mix it up. When you are using the for selection, this is where you enter the email address of that person. So all the staff members, when they come in, submit an email is gonna be sent automatically to this email address. Here I'm using the preformed fields, here I'm using the preloaded, here I'm using the, the both. Let's see what that looks like. I can see it using preview events. Because now if I click on the page list, now I have an approval page because I've activated the management system. Current members are being given free form. Can I do anything for speaker? Speakers get the pull down. Staff are seeing both the free form and the select. Okay. And whoever I had instead of save it for staff. Must have said it for both earlier. No problem. And then below the settings here, oh, I should mention. So how do you preload the supervisors? Well, underneath the preload list is your button where you can enter the names and email addresses for the pull-down list. It's a little hard to see, but there actually are fields here. Just click till you find it. Below this section here as are those text explanation boxes I was talking about. So if you wanna give some velvet glove information to folks, you can do it here, okay? You also have the option of using the headers and footers under look and feel. You can specify the approval page for headers. And below the text explanation boxes are the emails uh, that are gonna be sent to the supervisor. You have two emails possible. They're both gonna be sent at the same time as far as I can tell. Okay, again, these are HTML fields. You can save it if you like uh, in them. Go back to tour. So as you see, here was my custom text and the system automatically adds these lines at the bottom. Okay, so give your supervisor some information here about what this is all about and tell them, what, tell them uh, how to use the system. And that will be the text that is sent in the email on submission, okay? Now you also have some emails that are triggered. So once the supervisor says approved or declined, that can also trigger automatic emails uh, to I believe the registry, okay? You can customize the text here. If you want to CC people, you can click this and then add the CC here for who gets a copy of this email, someone on your team perhaps, okay? Yes, you can use merge codes. And that is, I think, all there is to show you there. Oop, popping ahead. Now, with management approval, uh, that approved status summary on the summary report does not work. That is for the standard approval only, okay? Not for management approval. You don't have a sp that special report. For management approval though, you do have some extra fields, some additional fields on the registered list. So you can create a custom view that uses these fields, the approval status, who the uh, supervisor name is, uh, who the, uh, what the email for that person is, et cetera. I, since I turn them all on, I get all these fields that I can add to a custom view, okay? The attendees registration status will be set to confirmed when they receive the confirmation email. So you may want to adjust the text of that confirmation email to say, yes, you've been confirmed, but you still have to go through the approval process if they are still pending or just tell them you were waiting for your 
supervisor to approve uh, your registration. It should be obvious that you need at least one category in your event to use this feature. Um, and we recommend that you enable sending confirmations to all in the group uh, if you are using the group booking feature. Okay. Are there any questions on this? Again, it's a lot, it's complicated. And uh, this is just a quick tour of this feature. So why I made a note here that trainings for these, the standard approval and the management approval is available on the Aventrain site on those on-demand training videos. Okay, again, hearing none. Let's talk about external review. Now this again is a way for you to share registration information outside of Aventry, outside of your unit with a group of external reviewers. Uh, all those reviewers have a common URL that you provide them and you program the reviewer's name, email address, and the password to let them in. You're gonna see it in a minute. The overview page is where you decide which fields they can see in that report. Then there's a review pop-up uh, for a button called review where if you want to collect comments from reviewers uh, when they're reviewing, you can get that information. And then you decide number one, how you wanna rate, how you want your reviewers to rate these submissions. And if you like, you can also have a weighting system on those, on those ratings. Okay. Now I don't have a lot of slides. We're going to go right into it. Again, under advanced settings, this one has its own tab, external review, where I've already programmed some of our external reviewers. Okay, so I'm going to give our reviewers this URL. Where they can log in. There's no way to customize this look and feel I have found. And here is what I've set up for them to review. Okay. Uh, I can show I can filter this view by categories. Okay. Uh, as a reviewer, because I'm logged in here as Tom, it defaults to say no rating and I can set a rating right here on this level and it's safe. If I want to write some comments, I can click the review button and here's that review pop-up you were talking about, okay? Where, it's where I have the comments field and I can generate reports with these comments later. Okay. Now you notice over here, I've got two different types of reviewers. I've got a reviewer and a power reviewer. What's the difference? Well, a reviewer can only see their own information when they're posting a review. And a power reviewer is able to see everyone else. They can. They have to click the review button to see the pop up. I'm not going to go in there and show you. Um, they have to click the review button to pop up. But then if they open the pop up, they will be able to see. Oh, Tom said this, and John rated them this. As a power user, George could see uh, what everybody's ratings were. Okay. Adding a reviewer is very simple. Just click Add Reviewer, and you get more fields, and you can populate them as you like. The overview page is where you can customize which fields are displayed here. It'll look very similar to what you use for um, registrant list, right? Just pick the fields that you want to allow your reviewers to see. And I have programmed both a text field and actually an, app, an upload field. So you can have people upload, in this case, an abstract. So this could be a, a quick and simple uh, presentation or abstract submission process. Uh, that's already built into a ventry. Okay. Uh, you can also add a customized header and footer uh, to that review page, that report page, as I've done here, right? Little information for the reviewer when they open this page. 
here's that review pop-up where again, I customize which fields are in the pop-up. And here I just made it very simple first name, right? And then I, the, the rating and the comments are actually fields. So if I don't want comments, I can, don't have to add that as a field on that review pop-up. And then down here is where you program what the rating system is. Choose whatever you like. I just threw this together. And then you can have the option of weighting the ratings. Okay. And the system will uh, give you not only the rating of each answer, each review, but also can provide an average from all the reviews submitted using your rating system. You decide which is the default here. You can add more as many as you like. Okay, pretty neat system. It has its own special report under the reports and functions page. You can open it up. It looks similar to registrant list, uh, but it's actually its, its own special reporting page. Uh, and you have the option of adding that reviewer average where the system will take all the answers for a particular attendee and from all the reviews and give you an average of that rating system if you're using and here I'm getting my review of comments. Okay. Any questions on external review? Okay. Well if everybody else is everyone's awake. This is the most complicated system and I'm going to be <laughs> the briefest on it because there's just very hard to get any kind of depth on this module. You have to kind of experience it. But as I said, this is a standalone, the abstracts module is a standalone system for collecting academic paper submissions. You customize, well, everything. You create the site, right? And you decide what roles between the submitter and the reviewer and the selector for each review. And you can customize how that website looks for each of those different folks. You can create it so that you send people to, the, to this page to just create their accounts to be able to submit later. You can, it's hard to see in my graphics here. Let's see if I can see if I can get it. Um, actually, well, I'm going to go there in a second, if there's interest. You can have a multiple stage selection process and you can program when does the stage begin and when does it close and when do we then move on to review, when does review close and when do we select, right? Uh, you can then decide after the whole process is done, which of those selected submissions are transferred over to your registration site into the agenda sessions module. So part of the agenda of your event. Hard to look at here. I can, I didn't want to jump in here, but I think I've got to, to give you a better view. Okay, now you don't see abstracts on yours because again, it's since it's a fee based, um, since it's a fee based service, we don't activate it until you contact us. Okay, so here we are in the site setup process where we set up the stages for the entire abstract process. We can set up submission groups. So if you want people to submit their papers, uh, for different topics of your academic conference, you can do that. You can decide how the users, uh, what permissions the users have. Um, yeah, lots of different options for what people can do. Do you want to limit submissions? Uh, do you want to have a, a score range on the review process? Do you want to allow editing uh, after they've been submitted? Um, Let's go into that site. So here is the site, and this was a, an actual demo site for this event. Um, I can, if I log in here, depending on what my role is, that will determine what I see once I get inside. 
If I'm a submitter, it'll give me instructions on how to submit. If I'm a reviewer, it will tell me, well, here are the submissions you can review um, and you know, go forth. And if I'm a someone who sort of the final selection committee, I come in and it'll say, okay, these are ready to decide if they're going to be accepted or not. Okay. Um, it's, you know, it, there's just so much here. It's hard to point out anything. I could take a whole hour just talking about abstracts. You can build the site. You decide what the form looks like for submissions. Uh, you can generate reports for submissions. So we treat this similar to the way we treat uh, mobile apps is that it's a development process. You contact us that you want this and then you will work with me um, or I will work with you to create this site for you and uh, shepherd you through the abstract submission process and review process and all that fun stuff. Oh, and with that, with just a couple of minutes to spare, now is the last call for any questions you have about any of entry topics. Like I said, I know there's a lot of information I just uh, gave you here, but uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions about what we've covered today or about anything of entry related you, you would like to ask. So turn off your, turn on your microphones or just put in the chat. Happy to... Uh, Give it a shot. All right. Well, either I've bludgeoned you uh, into submission uh, with information. And uh, you know, once you come uh, awake again, if you have questions, feel free to reach out uh, to myself or to Laura. Uh, Steve, there's a question in the chat. Oh, didn't see it. Hang on a second. Let me open this up. Is there a good primer on Salesforce interoperability? Um, the closest you're going to get, Jim, is again, back to our support site, eventry.asio.edu. Uh, we describe how, how we do it. We have two templates available for creating event registrations that will that will transmit your information from your venture registration site into into Salesforce. Um, I know there are, and it's the limitations of our templates are that they go into the enterprise ASU enterprise instance of Salesforce. If you have a a different instance for your unit. Uh, what I believe other units have done that have the resources they have they have worked with the Eventry API to uh, be able to take the data from their Eventry registrations and move them into Eventry. So those are kind of two answers for you. I can, we can show you what we currently are doing with Salesforce templates. Uh, for this uh, ASU instance, or if you've got the resources uh, and you have to do it into a different instance, that would be the API. Uh, other than that, it's really sending you to Eventry support. Um, oh, great. Okay. Well, that should simplify. Um, and feel free, you know, feel, as always, feel free to request those templates and give it a try to see if it meets your needs. The templates. Uh, include user guides to walk you through how to set them up and exactly what they do, what they can and cannot do. Um, and it's a process. It's a, pro it's a process right now. It's a process for every event registration. Get this to, to work. But uh, ASU Recruitment has been using this since the templates were available. So there you go. All right, well, again, if you do have any questions or you think of those great questions, you know, right after you've gotten off the meeting, feel free to send us an email at eventry at asu.edu. I encourage you to check out the Eventry support site here at ASU. The answers may be there for you. 
Um, but otherwise, thanks for coming, guys. And see you next month. And have a great St. Patrick's Day. <laughs>